So we just got a full complete look at the upcoming Snapdragon X2 ARM chip for Windows devices. There's going to be two variants, the X2 Plus and the X2 Elite. Now, when it comes to this chip, people have very mixed opinions. Some people don't see the point at all, and others think it is the future of computing on Windows. And to find out myself, I did end up purchasing a Surface Pro 11 last year with the Snapdragon X1 Elite, and thus I can now say that I definitively believe that this is the future of Windows computing. The overall performance has been fantastic, and the benefits of ARM chips like the efficiency, the battery life, the sleep-wake, makes me never want to go back to an x86 platform ever again, at least for my primary PC. And this all has me very excited for the next generation X2 chip because on paper it is a significant upgrade over the existing X1. So stepping back a little bit here, when it comes to ARM versus x86, the historic trade-off here was always performance versus efficiency. So historically, x86 had the performance edge, and ARM chips were much more efficient, and thus also had better thermals not requiring fans and being able to be used in smaller devices. And this is why native mobile platforms like Android and iOS, since day one, have always been ARM platforms. And now that the performance gap between ARM and x86 has essentially completely evaporated, as we're going to see later on in this video, aside from a few specific instances, there's really no longer any core advantage to the x86 platform. And the only real reason why platforms like Windows still use x86 is due to that legacy overhang. But of course, these Snapdragon chips are trying to change that. And I can say from my time with the Surface Pro 11, this is totally usable right now in 2026. Just about all applications like Firefox, Google Drive, Spotify, Netflix, Signal, even heavier applications like Adobe After Effects now have native ARM versions. And for the few apps that still don't have an ARM version, Windows does have a pretty efficient built-in translation software. And again, I just want to reiterate that my Surface Pro 11 has been by far my favorite PC ever. It all just performs so much better and feels like a more modern device versus regular x86 laptops. And it seems like with the introduction of this next generation X2 lineup, this is only going to be expanding. So in terms of the performance, the early indications indicate that on benchmarks, specifically Geekbench, the single core performance is now around 4,000 versus 3,000 of the previous X1. And if we expand this to include X86 chips like the AMD Ryzen AI9, we can see that the performance here also eclipses or is at least on par with these x86 chips. And to achieve this, Snapdragon did alter the architecture, with the main upgrade here being the new 3 nanometer fabrication process. They also did bump up the clock speeds across the board, and the Plus model is still a 10 core chip, while the X2 Elite is now a whopping 18 core chip. But by far the biggest upgrade and point of focus with the X2 is with the integrated graphics. This was a weak point of the previous generation, and they're claiming that this iGPU is now 2.3 times faster, with native ray tracing, greater efficiency, and better overall architecture. In the benchmarks, this thing not only beats out the previous generation, but it's also on par, if not beating, the AMD 890M, which is a very capable iGPU found in many handheld devices, including the Lenovo Legion Go 2. So again, we can see here that the performance both with the CPU and now the graphics is at least on par, if not better, than their x86 counterparts. But that's a first look and a breakdown of what we know so far about the upcoming Snapdragon X2 ARM chips for Windows devices. We should see the first laptops launching sometime in summer 2026 with these chips, but definitely let us know your take in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.